uh, the curve. Why? Because your ticket, your plane ticket, must match your passport. And if your passport has one name, and your ticket has to have two names, you have no airline to issue a ticket with one name. So they don't match. And Australia, I was told, Mr. Gowen G, you are going to come again. We may have to decide you from here. Matter of passport name matching with the ticket. So therefore, for I recommend you have to do something about it. What many people have done, they take the same name and all of it. Like people said, this is actually going to be good. And there were some other things uh, here. So that's another way you might be thinking. <laughs> I just want you to understand that problem. It's for your benefit. Go ahead. That's a question mark. Because when you don't say, <laughs> is, is, is there no difference about this? Right? Otherwise, when you are accepting the fact that you saw the picture, you would be accepting it.
heard my speech about my own problem. Maybe I, I, I should tell them. <laughs> but they will be curious. I don't really know the
which is essentially how the uh, coupling of the photochemical part and the carbon reduction part of the I couldn't uh, understand a lot of uh, portions of the paper, but then I thought that go on. Okay. <laughs> so before uh, I mean, okay. I'm Misha first. Misha, sorry. So before we delve into the actual evolution, I would like to give you a glimpse of the cosmic calendar, which is basically an idea which was popularized by Carl Sagan. This is basically the entire 13.8 billion years of the universe collated into a single year. So the Big Bang basically, oh, and in this case, there are 438 years in one second. 1.58 million years in one hour and 37.8 billion years in a day. So this is the amount of condensation that is taking place. So the Big Bang happened on 1st Jan. The biotic life um, started appearing in about September. So all this while was basically the formation of Earth and the abiotic evolution. Then prokaryotes arrived on 21st September, which is 3.8 billion years ago. And photosynthesis arrived on 30th September, which is again 3.4 million years ago. The first multicellular life appeared on 5th December. So this is basically the, this is the distance between the, like, original photosynthesis and multicellular life, where basically cyanobacteria would have evolved and then the endosymbiotic theory would have taken into place. And humans arrived only on 31st December, 11.52 p.m. So development now, I'm so, this was just like a perspective for everyone. Now, development of catalyst and rudimentary, rudimentary, rudimentary synthetic sequences. So basically, before we delve into this complicated issue, we need to know that the catalytic processes that happen inside our bodies are basically just counterparts of any chemical laboratory reactions that take place. So Essentially, what enzymes do is just enhance the rate of reaction that takes place. For example, iron can perform a lot of oxidation reduction reactions on itself, but the efficiency of its catalysis is very low. For example, if you take just atmospheric iron, the catalytic efficiency would be of the order 10 to the power minus 5. But if you conjugate it with heme, the porphyrin group of heme, the efficiency increases to 10 to the power minus 2. And if you uh, incorporate it into an intact enzyme, for example, catalase or um, cytochrome oxidase, the efficiency increases to 10 to the power 5. So we can see how evolution from a basic catalyst to a more sophisticated system could have slowly and gradually built up from those 21st September to December. So, in order to convert the rudimentary catalytic functions into highly efficient ones that now exist, there are basically two theories that are taken into consideration in every time of that abstract. First is the chemical, the first comes from the realm of chemistry and the other comes from the realm of genetics. The first one that comes from the realm of chemistry is based on the notion, and this I found a little hard to believe myself, that the product of a reaction may itself be a catalyst for the conversion of its precursor into itself. That means that, uh, for example, uh, if you take cupric iron and hydrogen, uh, that would lead to formation of a cupric ion and an acid or water, depending upon what the cupric ion is related to. But if, uh, and 
in this reaction, the cuprous ion, which is the product, itself serves as a catalyst for the forward step. So if you put cupric ion in water in a container, hydrogen in a container, and by some means, little or substantial amounts of uh, cuprous ions are formed, the entire reaction would be catalyzed in the forward direction and result in the formation of water slash acid or cuprous ion. And significance this has is the evolution or the catalytic evolution of the four five and six. We all know or probably don't know once we study methodology that the porphyrin sulfur carbon line is formed from glycine and some other metabolic intermediate and um, the formation involves a lot of a couple of oxidation steps. So once this porphyrin ring is formed, it could serve as a catalyst for its own production and therefore increase its own production and also serve as an oxi oxidant or a reductant in other metabolic processes. Now that is the first notion that products can themselves serve as catalysts and this is probably how Protoporphyrins would have been selected in order to be a part of the magic that we call photosynthesis. Um, the second notion comes from the realm of genetics, which was given by a scientist named Horus. He basically suggested that all life on Earth is one from a protein, which were basically capable of synthesizing. Um, which are basically capable of putting together all the substrates which were possible, which could lead to their reproduction, and a depletion or
covered the staff sunlight and was coupled with the dark reactor in order to take the model data. Okay, thank you very much. Any, any questions? I have several comments. Well, first of all, uh, I hope we open this question to my left. There are two things that we want to tell you. One is we spent time in the telling you that it is to be a three to one college target. It should be a team called Calvin Mason. Second thing I told you that Bob Connor has written an article. I've been writing for years telling you that it is not a dark net. That's why I said so. <laughs> but, but you need to say that it is done with this light and dark. So he has shown very clearly that if you take the light off, the enzymes are not activated in the cell. So one cannot call it dark net. He has a paper in Philosophical Research and in his own uh, life uh, of autobiography, in which he very clearly could see. Pay attention to what Bob Ocon said, but it's it, 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 it doesn't matter. No, no, don't explain, because it doesn't matter. You are today 2015, whether it was submitted or not, but you have to say how it is today. <laughs> so I, I, I can be cut, so I want I you to say right? So it's not nothing against you, or anything, just to be sure that you recognize. The other good point is that if you have scientists out who love our work from top to the bottom, I, I'm also guilty of uh, outsourcing <laughs> sometimes, yeah? Uh, all right? So, but I immediately say myself, it's okay. Any question? Or anybody else? Uh, yeah. Is there one more person to go? No. no. Okay, yeah, question. Yeah, there, yes, question. Yes, I see. Would you say the dark, the, what, the two reactions, uh, they happen separately, they have to evolve separately, and then they came together? And they become synchronized with each other. One argument in favor of that. Like, can you give any one reason that supports this argument? I think that when you look at all the components <coughs> in the dark, it will happen in the form. And the ATP, this is just according to this app that. And the ATP. Well, we we'll use the word app. Yeah. Yes. Why well, do you use the word app? I'm just curious. What do you say? What do you say? <laughs> What do you want? <laughs> where is where did you read it? I mean, I have not yet seen your reference. So, what is the source? Where is the source? Where is the publication? What is the reference? Where is it published? What is the volume number? What is the volume number and the page number? <laughs> so, what I'm saying and what does reference mean? Reference means the name of the author, the title of the work. <coughs> If it is published in a research paper, then it is a volume number, and today it is DOI number. If it's a book, then it's published. So basically, we all have to learn how to. So you can read the uh, internet and you can get anything you want, but that's not. It's good to read, all right, but it is important to go deeper to find out where it is. You should be called abstract. Abstract means it's a small thing, abstract is to the whole. Material. We have a lot of material, but it cannot be called an abstract. Abstract is a word. All right? Okay, anybody? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 please. Uh, so the ATP required for this could have come from oxidative process. Okay. And chlorophyll in the polyvinyl ring was in chlorophyll. See, the. Okay. I told you that the porphyrin ring evolved or came into being according to this rule. So this is the oxidative reductive catalytic capability of the ring. So um, there is a relation between ring and person. And its research shows that there was in cyclopropene and in a chlorophyrin line, there is a branch. <laughs> Right before the insertion of iron into the system. So in chlorophyll we have magnesium. So what would probably have happened is that the iron cannot sustain the excited state for longer. Uh, I'll tell you, I think you have to make shorter. Because uh, <laughs> there's another question. So it's not okay. Oh, yeah, See, you have only discussing. Yeah, later, exactly. Yeah, you have uh, in the Calvin Benson cycle, the ATP and NADP they make on the light here. In vitro. Yes, that is 
are when is doing the test queue like you say this time the page test queue by giving all the things so where are they getting the api and the page there like we are adding uh, yeah everything is added can we add api like that yeah you can oh thank you very much um, we uh, a very good talk very interesting talk and as i said the whole idea is a learning experience i am still learning how to do this thing so and i'm sure we all people learn from each other so let us see because we have a class at 10 o'clock at the end of class so i must get to go and then we shall meet here at uh, 12 uh, but please come 5 minutes before we need to change the style of the way and we need to attend all classes okay